This video will quickly walk you through the process by which you can create a Fabric Pay-As-You-Go node, assign administrators in your Fabric administrative portal, and then create a workspace. You'll see here that I have two resource groups available in my Azure demo tenant. And if I go ahead and click on the resource group that has been set up for Fabric, you'll see that there's already an existing Fabric capacity in that resource group. This is just an F2 that's set up as a Pago, and it was for development and exploration purposes. Now we're gonna to go to the Azure Marketplace, search for Fabric, and you'll see the first option that comes up is Microsoft Fabric. Go ahead and hit Create. Then under the Create Fabric Capacity page, you'll see that you can choose a subscription. We just have one subscription in our Smarter Health demo tenant. You can then select a resource group, and then you create a capacity name. Also, it's important to be very deliberate with the region that you choose, because once you create fabric artifacts, it'll be hard to switch regions. For the capacity I'm creating, I will go ahead and leave the fabric capacity in the same Azure region as the Power BI tenant. In general, it'll make things a little bit easier. You can choose whatever region you want for that fabric capacity, but this way everything's in the same Azure region. For now, I'll leave myself as the capacity administrator. If you'd like to add some tags for tracking purposes, you can do that here. Then Azure will validate to make sure that everything is valid and the name is not already taken by somebody else. And then you can hit create. You can see now that the deployment is in progress and we'll fast forward to when the deployment is actually completed. It doesn't take that long. And just like that, you have a brand new fabric capacity inside of a resource group in Azure in the region that you've selected. You'll notice that the status of the fabric capacity is active. Uh, with the pay-as-you-go models, you can also pause these nodes and when you pause it, you will no longer pay for compute that you are not using. So for example, if you have a development environment and you'll only be developing a couple days a week, you could unpause the node while you're using it and then pause it for the rest of the days of the week and the weekend and evenings whenever you're not using it. From this portal, you can also change the size of the node in order to quickly and efficiently scale up and scale down. Again, we chose an F64 because this is the minimum level at the time of this recording at which the Power BI capabilities and also the Fabric Copilots are available. If instead of the pay-as-you-go model, you'd prefer to use an Azure reserved instance for Fabric, you can type reservations into the top bar. And I don't have any available here that I can purchase uh, within my demo tenant. But if you did, you could do that here, select the subscription that you want it to build to, and also assign it to a resource group. Moving to the Microsoft Fabric Administrative Portal, formerly the Power BI Admin Portal. First, let's take a look at the tenant settings. And in order to use the new Fabric capacity that you've created, you'll need to either have Fabric items enabled for the entire organization or for specific security groups if you wanna lock it down to a smaller group. Then additionally, you may want to activate the Fabric Copilots, uh, and likewise, you can you know, activate those for you know, specific security groups or for the entire tenant. Moving to the capacity settings, you'll see we do not have any premium nodes in this demo tenant. We do have a couple of active trials, which could be moved over to this new F64 capacity that we just created. And we now have two different fabric capacities showing up in the portal. The first was that F2 that I mentioned earlier in the video that was there for development and testing purposes. And now we have our new Smarter Health Fabric Node 1, which is an F64 with all of the Power BI and Copilot capabilities available to us. If I go ahead and click on the capacity name, here I could add some additional colleagues to be administrators of that fabric node. It's usually a good idea to add more than one person to be an administrator, just in case somebody quits their job and doesn't show up. You'll have someone else who can take over those duties and make sure that everything continues to run smoothly in your production node.
Now let's create a new workspace. For the purposes of this video, we'll just call it Fabric Test Workspace and then delete it afterwards. We'll skip assigning a domain. We can always add that later. Then under Advanced, right now it's defaulting to the free trial. But let's move over to Actual Fabric Capacity. Select the new F64 that we created. Hit Apply. And then for this use case, we're gonna add a security group who will be the members who can actually uh, start building things uh, within the workspace using all of the new tools within Fabric. So that's it. In that short period of time, we spun up a new F64 Fabric node, assigned administrators in the Fabric portal, and created a new workspace that will leverage the compute power of that new F64 node.